Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to start a three-episode mini-series to present the general idea of my own step-by-step problem-solving methodology mainly for mathematics and physics. Our education systems concentrate on providing raw knowledge but not so much on providing the tools necessary for learners to develop their critical thinking skills. Students and pupils alike learn how to solve exercises mechanically and lack the ability to interpret their results or even check if said results are correct. Even worse, they read the exercise and don't know how or where to start solving it, thus losing precious time during studying and tests. In this episode, I will present the structure of this problem-solving methodology while in the next two episodes, I will be solving one elaborate example for each topic. In them, I will be applying this methodology one step at a time and also sharing some of the tips that I developed while teaching these topics myself. Let's begin. So the general structure of this methodology is the following. Step number one, read the problem carefully word for word and take note of any given data that you come across. If necessary, make a quick sketch, especially in geometry problems, unless provided by the problem. Step number two. For each section of the problem, we ask the question, what do I need to prove or calculate? This way we look for the condition necessary to answer the question based on the governing laws then we write the appropriate equation that includes our unknown variable. Step number three. The unknown variable or proof condition becomes our target. We always rearrange the equation to solve for that variable first before we do any data substitution. This is absolutely necessary to prevent possible error transfers and also lets the learner practice for theoretical exercises without numerical data. Step number four. Once we isolate our unknown variable on the left-hand side of the equation, then and only then we substitute the data. Also in physics problems, we need to be very careful when substituting the values of vector variables. We substitute the magnitude and the direction, either positive or negative. Step number five. After calculating our result, we enclose it in a frame to indicate to the examiner that this is our final answer and also to keep everything tidy. At the same time, we check if our answer is within the question's parameters and restrictions and also our own expectations. Step number six. If any subsequent question can be answered using the given data directly, we do so without relying on the previous results to avoid possible error transfers. Even though the examiners may be instructed not to penalize such error transfers, our goal is to reliably answer every question on our own. Why? Because in life there are no examiners, no exams, no recommended solutions and certainly no marks. Yes, there are aids like calculators, computers, simulators, but they are only tools. They do not substitute our mind and our ability to evaluate the best answer to a given situation. This is the only way we can build up our confidence level and experience realistically. In the next video, I'm going to solve a mathematics problem using this methodology in order for you to fully grasp its application. Thank you.